welcome. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. A very warm welcome uh, to our Women's Federation um, launch of our curriculum, our long awaited curriculum of Europe and the Middle East chapter. Um, lots of educators in our region have worked on this curriculum for the last for the past few years. And um, we're very excited to uh, launch it tonight. Um, we wanted to um, also launch it uh, to tonight because of the, the, the commemoration of the 75 years of the Declaration of Human Rights. And that was on the 10th of December. And to honor this day, uh, we wanted to launch it uh, connected to this day. Um, so I would like to, uh, this evening we're gonna have a look at it, uh, have an impression about it and how to use it. Um, it's a character education program uh, targeting especially young women, but also educators, men, and how to, uh, it's a program to develop character education and uh, provide tools right. for That's women in our society. So, uh, without further ado, I would like to first uh, welcome uh, and announce uh, Mrs. Zoe Bennett. Uh, she has been uh, responsible for the program. So, Zoe, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming, for being here with us. Uh, finally, it's happening. Like uh, our MC said, finally, we have the... ...of this... Um, of this uh, curriculum, which has been worked by many people. Uh, it's, uh, as you know, um, there are many uh, curricula, character education curricula, empowerment curricula out there, and uh, also addressing youth. So we had, when we, we decided to do this, uh, this curriculum, to do this program, we had to think very well about its content. What more do we have to offer to the youth? What contribution do we want to make to their life, their future, their, and also to the future of their nations? You know, when we are addressing youth, you know that we are <clears throat> naturally addressing the future. So it is a very important thing, a very important point. And uh, when we first started this uh, this curricula uh, to, to prepare it, it was addressing uh, young women in the Middle East, uh, also in Europe and Eurasia, in this um, part of the globe, uh, with its very various uh, cultures, very various languages and habits, but still, the individuals, especially youth, they all have the same quests, the same desires. And we wanted to try to, to respond to this. So as you will see a bit later from the uh, explanation of the, um, of the curriculum by my young colleague, Kefile, um, this program has the ambition to empower uh, every young person to inspire a happy and active family with balanced relationships among the members, and also to guide the, the dynamic youth towards a leadership that can bring peace, that can build peace. Peace today is a very, very long goal. That we, we really don't see with many much hope, but really precisely if youth is able to, to have hope of peace and to see the way to, to form relationships that can develop peace, that's probably the first step to, 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 to make it to make peace a reality. So um, I think I, for whoever wants to um, explore this program, uh, there will be, whether it is a young person or an educator, there will be a lot of aha, a lot of realizations. So we hope this can bring, this curriculum can bring something new, something different from uh, the other uh, guides. They are all very valid, but uh, 
we hope it can be something really exceptional for everyone who wants to, um, to, to explore it with its variety, with its all the themes that we have tried to cover. Um, so uh, I want really to thank very much all the many experienced and qualified women who made the effort over a very long time to prepare things and share their experiences with, uh, with us and prepare and offer their uh, efforts, their material in order to, um, to, to create this uh, curriculum. Uh, at the end, many of those who made the effort are not, do not appear at the last, at the, at the final um, curriculum contents, but all their work is going to be attached as, a, as, as, a, as a, an attachment, as a, as a material reference. There will be references to all the, the, the PowerPoints or texts that everyone has made over the, the, the years, because in their own value, in their own as an as an individual presentation, they are very valid and very they can be very useful for those who can um, hear them, who can see them. So, uh, of course, I want to um, thank um, Marilyn Angeluzzi, Katerina Bauer, Barbara Yukina, Joanna Torreson, Najet, uh, Shushan, among the many many others. Um, I apologize if I forget many, <clears throat> but these people, they have worked, we have worked together and they have left their material for us to use. Uh, but of course, we have the authors of the final contents. The contents you will hear today uh, is made um, by uh, Ingrid Lindemann, she's from Germany. Uh, she was a former uh, president of uh, WWP Germany. She has, uh, she's a co-founder of the Dignity of Women project, and she's a very experienced educator. <clears throat> Together with her, there was uh, Alexandra Skoniesna from Poland. She, they worked together to make uh, another presentation that we have. Uh, she's also a psychologist and, and a counselor. Uh, another counselor we have is Gabriella Zora. She's from Austria. And she has been very active in organizing fora for um, educating families and, uh, and, 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 and in youth as well. And of, of course, we have our very dear uh, Mrs. Ioana Marie, who is from Greece. She's uh, the president of a very interesting and very wonderful organization called the uh, Hellenic Association of Prenatal Education, which is a branch, a part of the um, Prenatal Education Association. Uh, a, a big international organization that is dealing with uh, the ways that uh, the couple, not only the mother, but also the father, the couple and the environment of the couple can be prepared before the baby is born in order to uh, bring to life uh, peaceful, well disposed, disposed children for a peaceful life and to uh, act in a peaceful way. How wonderful. What, uh, what most uh, fundamental, if we are trying to set up a, a world of peace, isn't it? So, and finally, of course, we have um, Mrs. Caroline Hansen, uh, who is uh, the director of the WWP office um, for the, in, at the UN. And she was very significant. She made an incredible um uh, contribution, not only for uh, the contents, the contents of uh, module three and more, but also for the form, for uh, the formatting and uh, with her staff, uh, she she did a great job. Uh, but she's, I will let her talk about it uh, because she uh, she's dealing with the UN and I'm sure she has lots of things to say about this uh, curriculum. So, um, of course, of course, I should not forget uh, the initiator of this um, this uh, program, who is uh, Mrs. Yona Moon. Uh, some many years ago, 
we had a conference and at the end of the conference, she said, why don't you organize a curriculum which would be good for young people and as, as well as for uh, older uh, um, educators to use it for their young people. And uh, that well, we found that it was a very good idea. And we went on to this, um, this direction. And she has been, while she was president of uh, WWP, now she's not, she has moved on to another, to different other positions. Um, she was very encouraging. She was always asking, how is it going? Yeah. Uh, so that's about the people that have contributed. Um, one last point I would have to say uh, is uh, about those who would probably be among the, the audience here who would be interested to use the, um, uh, the curriculum. Uh, from today, we launch it and we put it out there. Um, maybe in one or two weeks, it will be ready to be sent to whoever wants to use it. Uh, they can go to the website, uh, uh, WWP Europe website. Perhaps somebody can put the, the link on uh, on the on the chat, and um, they can fill in the form, and we can communicate with them and send uh, the the, uh, the program. And then, if uh, anyone at your will wanted to make a small um, contribution uh, to the to, uh, to to our bank account it would be very would be very grateful because we need the funds to promote this uh, program uh, in many parts of the world where uh, it is not possible uh, to the in, in uh, the middle east in eurasia uh, it needs we need funds to promote uh, the program so uh, that's what that's all I had to say. Thank you very much, and I will let my colleagues to continue the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zoe, for your introduction, and uh, um, yeah, explaining how it came about, who contributed, and uh, thank you so much. Um, yes, our curriculum, building a world the women's way. Um, so uh, like uh, Zoe mentioned, um, the UN office also has contributed a lot uh, to this curriculum and uh, especially also um, uh, thought about the usefulness of this program for uh, women leadership also within the UN, uh, the impact that this uh, curriculum might uh, have within the UN uh, and the UN world. Uh, so, um, because of that, we want to uh, invite Mrs. Karen Henschen, uh, who is the director of our UN uh, office, uh, to uh, say something about how uh, things came about and how uh, we could uh, impact the UN with our curriculum. Ms. Carolyn, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kyung Yen. Uh, good evening, everyone. I too feel like this is really a special day, actually, as rainy and dreary as it is outside. I think it's really an important day, a really long time in coming, actually. Huh? And uh, to create this curriculum where we especially thought something for women and girls. We have curricula also in our different organizations, amazing character education programs, but we didn't have something that was really especially created for women and girls to become, to grow up, to become peace leaders, to live really for the sake of the world. And I think that was in our mind the whole time. What I, what I understand also is that great accomplishments always have deep roots. And recently I learned that again when I was organizing our we had the 50th anniversary of our, the NGO Committee on the Status of Women, uh, where I'm president in Geneva. And we interviewed some of our early 50 years ago, young women who were members of that committee. Some of them are 195, 93. And um, it was really quite amazing actually to see what kind of personalities they have even I hadn't seen them for a while, and how a life of 
sort of advocacy for peace, what happens a hundred years later? You know, it, it's really quite, quite remarkable and really, really kind of motivated me even more. I remember at that meeting, I, I don't know if it was 19, uh, 2019 or 18, or when uh, Yaninim uh, was attending the Middle East Peace Conference. And uh, of course, we again talked about the curricula. We were always talking about our curricula. And then Yaninim said, a few of us were in a circle. Marilyn was there, a few others. And Yaninim said to Zoe, you take responsibility that this gets done because she knows she knew we were talking about it so much and we could be so excited to talk about it, but we didn't make time to really get it done. And I think she understood that Zoe was the right person to really do that, make sure that it gets to the end. So I was asked to say a little something about where to use this. I think, of course, in our local chapters, we've all been asking for this in our local activities. This is something it's not made for teaching theology or, but really this practical point, inspiring actually point of how to really live in peace, how to break down barriers so that each individual, each young woman can shine. And uh, of course that we can catch our common points together a young, among women, something created really especially for women and girls. So within the committee that I work, we have uh, now for this upcoming year, we have a, we decided we're going to make a platform for training programs among our membership. So that means we will also have one time this year where we can present our training to this whole network of 30 plus international women's NGOs. I think we can, I didn't even tell Zoe that yet, but I think we can plan for that. And uh, But I also wanted to go back a little bit in history because Zoe came in at that moment, I think most specifically, but I also feel like I have to give some credit for much before that when we were working on, on a similar kind of curriculum that led us to that point. And um, uh, we, I think many of us, we can go back. And in fact, I was even today, I was looking through some of my old folders. And uh, back in the year 2015, it goes back further than that, but that was one significant point. 2015 at a leaders meeting in Czech Republic, I think some of you on this call were there. We sat together for hours and we put together a, a kind of a framework for a curriculum that we called Time for Women, Heal Yourself, Your Family, and the World. And I see so, even though I hadn't consciously thought about it, I see how what we have produced now was really that that was sort of set most clearly. And that point, and I even read the three points. It was a three-part training module with three teams. We had coordinators. Again, some of you were on this call. And we set it up in a very similar kind of format, living for the sake of others, finding our cosmic value in life, Second part is training participants to understand the value of family um, and to understand the value of their participation and contribution to global family. This is exactly what we did. And then third, creating the enabling environment for women to graduate to a community level sense of responsibility and value, living for world peace and makes our lives have global value. In other words, building a culture of peace. And so it's, a, it's an incredible thing to me that I discover more and more as I get older. Some seeds are planted early and then you, you don't really realize how they, when they are kind of fertilized or they're just there under the soil trying to get through and then things, something really amazing comes out, which I believe this curriculum is, maybe not completely perfect yet, but really it's, it's quite, uh, has a lot of uh, future possibilities. And um, so, uh, and maybe just, I, I just wanted to add one more point. Back in the year, some of you will remember this too, in the year 2011, we had a conference. It was a UPF Women's Federation conference back when Dr. Song was pushing us to make all these European leadership conferences. It was about the cooperation between Europe and Africa and the culture of peace. And um, I had brought a, a guest speaker from IOM, International Organization on Migration, who was, uh, yeah, 
who actually I had a chance to talk with quite a bit before and after. And I was talking to him at that time about the idea, because his responsibility was for the refugee camp in Lampedusa, in Malta, but also a chief of mission of different regions in the Balkans and in different places. And uh, I was talking to him about exactly this point, 2011, and it wasn't something that I just thought of in that moment. It's just because within Women's Federation, we had been talking about this for, so, you know, understanding that we should be doing something like this for a long time. And uh, so I remember telling him a little bit about the essence of what this curricula could be like, which is basically our view of character education, you know, that we, many of us know. Um, and he was getting so excited and he was saying, this is something we should bring to the refugee camps. I, I, this would be so amazing to really bring, especially beginning with young women in the camps who really don't have anything, they, any sense of value for the time they are spending there. Not That's definitely not educational use or usually. And uh, he said, if you, I told him it's not developed yet, but we're working on it. And uh, he said, when you get it developed, please, let's talk again. Now, of course, that was 12 years ago. <laughs> but anyway, just to say, I think the sky is the limit. And it, and and we, we can, again, make it better and we can approve it, region, Im, improve it region by region. But uh, I think there is something inspired in putting, you know, getting so many good people together to work on this project. And Zoe, that you really brought us to the, to the conclusion, you know, where we could launch it. So anyway, thank you very much for having the time to say that. Thank you so much, Ms. Kernan, uh, for uh, sharing this piece of history and how all the efforts of all these amazing women educators uh, throughout the years made a beautiful end result and how um, the, the seeds grow while we don't realize perhaps. Yes, indeed, great accomplishments, uh, accomplishments always have deep roots. I really like this quote. And perhaps uh, our curriculum is a fruit of that under the leadership uh, of Jan Amun uh, in that time. So uh, without further ado, now it's the time to um, have a look at the curriculum itself, uh, a brief overview of how, uh, it's, uh, uh, how it ended up. Um, a lot of people thought about it, um, reflected on it, worked also with it. And I would like to uh, welcome my colleague, Kifilwe Lebepe, and she will um, go through the curriculum as, as it is uh, at this moment. So Kifilwe, thank you so much for being here and the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction, Kyungin. And I would like to greet everybody. Um, and I'm just going to share um, my presentation. And as Kyungin said, I will do my best to give a brief overview. It's a lot of um, rich content. Um, building a world of peace, the woman's way curriculum. Okay, and this is um, the theme. Uh, empowerment and advocacy, advocacy program for young women and girls by Women Federation Europe, Middle East Eurasia and Office for UN Relations. In the introduction, Zoe did mention um, who the authors were, so I will not repeat it, but you can see um, how much uh, contribution we had and how many contributors were involved in module one, two, and three. And um, I will just be going through each of the chapters um, briefly and just giving some highlights. <clears throat> so module one uh, is about the empowerment of self and um, it's about dignity as a cornerstone for a culture of peace by Ingrid Lindemann. And here she talks about, um, let me just mention that there's about 10 chapters and an addendum in module one, but I will only just be going 
uh, through a few of the chapters because of time. So um, one of the chapters is called Monsters of Degradation, and it's about identifying different types of violence and degradations that one can experience throughout one's life. And it's important to talk about these monsters that hurt our dignity so that we can actively stop stop them and heal. And if you look at the pictures at the bottom, um, it highlights some of these monsters. It's generally things that we do not want to deal with. And um, as part of the curriculum, there's also an opportunity to reflect. And this also helps in the healing process. And another chapter is called Milestones on the Way to Strengthen Our Self-Dignity. Um, normally, when we talk about milestones, we often refer to external achievements that can be measured by others. But in this chapter, the focus is on the internal um, milestones, such as love, appreciation, forgiveness of the selves. And it helps women to become their own cheerleaders who validate themselves before seeking external validation. And after studying this chapter, one is able to answer the question, which is, what is my personal milestone? The most important milestone for me to live in my dignity. And if you look at the screen, these are some of the themes um, that I touched on in this chapter. Um, Self-awareness, self-esteem, self-love and ex acceptance and living authentically. I also really like um, the pictures that were used here. And um, this is also another sl uh, slide regarding the milestones of um, uh, <clears throat> strengthening our self-dignity. And uh, it's just a step-by-step -step guide of where to start um, and where to end. Okay, and uh, another chapter here is dignity as a mandate, dignity as a way of life. Um, this chapter teaches about dignity in different aspects of our lives, starting from birth, uh, growing up, and all the way to adulthood. Um, the concept of dignity in different relationships and um, different aspects in life. Um, for example, in professions such as journalism, business, environment, healthcare, and beauty. It's really broad um, and it's really um, relevant, I think, for every type of woman, probably men as well. And this is what I will be covering for uh, module one. And then I will move on to module two. Okay, sorry. So still on module one, apologies. Another chapter is the dignity of men and women. This um, chapter is really important for harmony. Um, and the author writes here, let us be aware that as well as a woman's role has to change, so does the man. It highlights that we need to start making the change within ourselves and the dignity of a woman will affect men. And if the dignity of a woman is to be restored, then we need a, ch a change of mindset from both men and women. And now I will move on to module two. And um, the chapter that I will start with is how to be a pool of love. And in this module, um, it talk, I mean, in this chapter of this module, it talks about the art of loving and empathetic communication. It teaches one to focus on the subject um, when 
listening to something and also to be able to listen, give compassion without centering on themselves. It also helps with how to create an open atmosphere when somebody wants to open up to you and also it guides on how to respond appropriately. Um, it also talks about the different types of love, positive love, negative love, and also true love. And then it speaks about loving respectfully. Uh, one of the most important points here is love as an action. I think most uh, people are conditioned that love is words or love is rhetoric, but it helps one to identify um, love as an action and also how to act out love and how to show love. And here, uh, one of the other points is mastering the art of love is a lifetime job. And uh, it highlights that we need to constantly work on ourselves, love and respect ourselves. And then the next uh, chapter is the many roles of a woman here. It speaks about the role of a woman as a child, sibling, spouse, parent, and many more relationships that we know um, women are generally a part of. And um, it also highlights that normally love and character building are learned from one's home, although it's not always the case, but ideally this is where uh, all of us should be learning these good quality. A mother's well-being has a big impact on a child. It also talks about um, from it highlights from the the pregnancy stage um, when the child is still a baby um, and later in development. And um, it also highlights the importance of a mother's happiness uh, that women need to take care of themselves and they should make that part of their motherhood journey. And uh, one of the lessons here um, is that leaders that are often tra uh, trained by motherhood have empathy when resolving conflict and they are better they are better placed to understand. So it's talking about the lessons of motherhood and applying them um, in other aspects of our lives and in the other roles that women play. And here's a slide um, from this chapter. It says, our society needs women who have developed through their life's experience a motherly heart. Mothers contribute to a better society by applying their special gift of compassion, intuition, and love. And then the next chapter here is um, prenatal education. And... Um, it's uh, by Joanna Marie, the president of the Hellenic Association for Prenatal Education. Um, and uh, here is one of the slides. It says prenatal education is considered the foundation of physical and mental health of life values. Um, this chapter has 10 golden rules for future parents. I'll just go, go through them quickly. Conception with love, eat healthy and take pro in proper nutrition. Okay. Sorry? Oh, okay. Um, calm your soul by walking in nature. Touch your child with love. Wish that your child may be gifted with virtues. Be watchful of your peers. Welcome the birth of the child who came to your family and breastfeed it with love. This is such a beautiful um, chapter and each of these 10 golden rules are uh, uh, very well um, 
put together and um, they do touch on the positive, but um, it also guides um, mothers and expectant mothers who are in really, really bad situations. It also touches on how to help mothers to accept these situations, to accept the child, even though it might not have been planned or necessarily wanted. So this is just um, a short description. I, I wish I could really, really go more into all of these, um, these chapters. And another slide. Mother Nature endowed her daughters, the woman, the power to create, together with men, a humanity of peace and harmony. Okay, I have gone through the 10 golden rules. And um, the next module, um, Familiarchy by Carolyn Hanschen. Um, the term familiarity means a form of, of social organization in which the family unit is the nexus, seeking collaboration rooted in love and shared res responsibility over dominance. I think um, this is um, this actually is the essence of the whole module, um, the definition here. And it compares uh, pa uh, patriarchy, uh, matriarchy, and familiarchy. And um, it's also quite interactive. And there is a lot of exercises um, in this module. It, uh, it also talks about um, universal um, family rights um, in the context uh, of human rights and, um, and also the United Nations. And it also focuses on love within the family. Um, the other points here are the evolution of the concept of rights and sustainable peace culture. And this is just an example of um, the exercises in the module. Um, what uh, the learner would be going through along with the teacher, some of the questions asked, why is the family so important to my development and peace in the world? Where did I come from? What is my potentials? How do my expectations affect my choices? How are family, parents, beliefs, culture, race or a nation an important part of discovering who I am and unlocking talents? Uh, strengths and gifts? How do our families affect our communities and governance? How can I give back co um, contribute to peace in the world daily? And this is very interesting because it's not often where um, we have platforms where we can actually think about family, human rights, um, society, politics, and um, this gives uh, one an opportunity to reconcile all those um, topics within the family. And then we are on module three, and uh, module three was also by um, Carolyn Hanschen, and um, the first chapter is about the impact of leadership. It talks about universal leadership values. What virtues do I need as a leader? It also talks about the real power of community. There's a lot of um, interactive exercises here as well. And um, within each topic, um, the teacher and the learners would be able to do practical exercises and um, to think and discuss and debate all those topics as well. And um, there's also a global history on uh, women's rights. On women's rights, this um, focuses on individual women who have set the example of positive um, 
leadership in the world. And here are some of the um, two slides from this chapter. Um, here's another exercise. How do people become heroes? And it asks, do you know other women that have be that became ro role models in their field? How do they do it? And then choose a local problem and reflect about and reflect about how to solve it. Imagine being asked to solve the, the same problem for the entire region. And then um, key to governance, mind and heart of a global citizen. And the exciting thing is that within this chapter, even if in the beginning, um, the learners had no idea how to answer this, by the end of the chapter, they would be able to answer all of this and also uh, be able to relate this chapter to their own um, situations in their regions, in their communities, etc. cetera. And um, the agenda point, the importance of empowering yourself, working together with other women to influence change and improve the uh, improve your world. In unity, there is strength. And then um, the another chapter on in module three, the impact of values for a peaceful society. Um, it talks about living for the sake of others, the character building um, aspects. It also talks about development of the heart. There's also a lot of um, exercises here. And uh, another topic is how do we change culture and activism? And this is quite unique in that normally when you think of change and activist, activism, you think of, um, you know, aggression or radicalization. Uh, but in this chapter, it guides on how to do it uh, within your, your feminine aspect. And it also works together on how to do it in a peaceful manner, in a reconciliatory um, manner as well. Okay, and this is um, another slide which explains a little bit uh, on familiarity, a new fra framework and social system that brings out the best in human nature and provides a model for global peace. Is there something better to replace the current systems and there it is, cancelling out of patriarchy, matriarchy, and now familiarity. And then another chapter in module three is conflict resolution. And it speaks about peace building and conflict re resolution. Um, connecting conflict resolution and peace building um, with the sustainable de development goals, fulfilling the sustainable um, development goals. And it also talks about the practical process of um, reconciliation and the role of women in the peace making process. And it also talks about sustainable peace. Um, another thing to remember here is that it's not just reading, but it also, um, it teaches and it requires um, the students to interact, to also give their own uh, input and to be able to do all of these things in a practical manner. And here is one of the slides, building bridges, I mean, build, sorry, bridges of peace, a new way to heal the wounds of abuse, misunderstandings, intolerance, prejudices, and war. Peace and reconciliation are anchored in the hearts of people through friendship and partnership, usually not treaties. That is something very important. To, um, to remember and consider. And um, the very last chapter um, in module three uh, focuses on ecology. Um, 
ecology and responsible stewardship for care and nature. And um, some of the sections is how can I impact the world? Um, there's a, a group project on this. And within the group pro project, um, the focus is youth empowerment and also the peace building aspect as was mentioned in, um, in previous um, chapters as well. And another slide from this chapter, every action has to take into consideration the environmental impact. Don't make it a burden or a judgment on others, but a service to humanity and our planet. And thank you very much. Um, due to limited time, unfortunately, this is all I could share on the chapter, but I hope you were all able to get um, a brief overview of how everything is laid out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kifirwe, for uh, presenting this to us. It was quite a job, I uh, I know, because it's an extensive uh, curriculum. And uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for sharing this with us. Um, yeah, the different chapters on empowering the self, the family, and the society. Um, and uh, yeah, what, really, what I really like about it is that a lot of modules have a lot of exercise. And like you said, that also if women and girls in certain situations do not have any idea how to answer the questions that through following the curriculum and doing the exercises, uh, they will be able to uh, answer the questions and practice them as well. So a beautiful uh, example of empowerment through the curriculum. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, presenting it. Of course, you have been mentioning what, uh, uh, what is being covered in the different uh, modules. So, uh, but I think we all, um, I hope we are all excited to uh, start working with it so we can understand uh, what you have been explaining to us. Thank you so much. Um, um, yes, so that's that's really nice also the whole um the the concept of familiarity and how it's also um very relevant for the un uh world is a very precious um item in our curriculum thank you so much so uh, i hope we could all have a little bit an idea um uh how we can work with the curriculum and what it covers thank you again and um like Zoe mentioned in the beginning, in her introduction, um, uh, using this draft um, um, uh, has to be in this format uh, because uh, there's a certain way to follow the curriculum. And um, if there's any uh, question about how to use it or if there is a, a wish or need to translate it in another language, um, please contact um, Zoe or Carolyn, we will uh, put the, their uh, details a little bit later uh, in the chat. So um, there also have been uh, some ladies who have already been able to uh, work a little bit with the curriculum. And we would like to share two ladies, uh, to invite two ladies to share a little bit their experience uh, with a part of the curriculum. And first of all, we would like to, in, uh, to welcome uh, Kasia from Albania. I don't know uh, if Kasia is here, but Kasia, if you... Good evening. Good evening. Sorry for my voice. It's just a little bit hard for me to speak today, but uh, I'll try my best. So um, we used just some part of the curriculum and mostly with the young people, uh, most of them were young women, but also a few young men. And these were young people who participated, most of them in our speech competition. And so most of them were quite ambitious and you know interested in maybe working more in the society, thinking about the future. So in a sense, we call that a kind of like a leadership course. So we call it under, under the name of young people, Peace Academy. This was like our, our title overall. And like 
we decided to only hold like four meetings. So we kind of had to pick up some of the topics and also not of all the topics that were presented today already were available. So we we selected like from each module, just a few ideas. So we, uh, we presented first the idea of values as basis for leadership. And uh, then we talked a little bit about the family. So challenges of interpersonal relationships in the family and society. Then about the transformation of con of conflicts. This was also a topic that was covered in the curriculum. And then talking about youth's vision for peace when we touched upon a little bit this idea about the UN and the action in society. And we kind of, we complemented it also with a kind of short training on how to write a project. So we connected it. And our format was that we usually presented a short presentation uh, by ourselves because we translated it into Albanian. So our presentation was usually a thing around maybe half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. And we used to also, uh, yes. And we also, and then uh, we usually invited us a peace ambassador. So we combined the topic. So we gave some part from the curriculum and we invited a peace ambassador to uh, maybe share a testimony a little bit from their lives to share about how these values and how this vision is like applicable in society to share about their experience, which also really added some like a, to the impact of the teaching because and these young people, they can really see that this is something real. It's a, it's applicable. It's not just some theories or ideals. And it was also uh, very attracted, attractive to them. First, of course, to learn what, whatever we had to say. Many said these are new things and it's very interesting. But also, of course, to meet with those peace ambassadors. And uh, for the peace ambassadors, it's also very exciting to meet the young people. So we kind of combined all those all those elements all together and uh, we surely uh, will continue this year with this this project too so anyways thank to everybody who uh, work hard on making all these materials thank you thank you so much Kasia for your uh, explanation how, how you how you've worked with it in Albania and uh, under the umbrella of the Peace Academy it's very nice to hear that they were ambitious and eager um, to work with it. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. And then I would also like to invite uh, Mrs. Deborah. Um, is she here? Yes. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, what a great presentation with a great project. I am inspired. <laughs> So um, we took inspiration from the content about dignity uh, from this curriculum. And we started this initiative with uh, the Women's Federation chapter in Italy specifically. So it was a, collabor a collaboration between me and my mother. So there was quite a, a special project for us in that sense. Um, I was giving my contribution mostly as the main speaker and coach. Um, and then Elisabetta was giving a big support as MC. She was taking care of the guests and um, she also gave a talk for during this course. Um, the material that we used was the one specifically about dignity. And um, we, we took a lot of inspiration from it. I feel like it's a very versatile material that can be taken in many different directions. So... We, we focused on a few points and then we kind of expanded with uh, extra the extra knowledge and the extra resources that we uh, that we had. Um, we made this as a paid event. Um, so we had a few subscribers and um, two um, two new uh, participants who were not women's Federation members. Um, we divided the content in four parts. So we had an introduction about what is dignity, what is this course about, um, and why is it important to talk about it in today's uh, world and to society, especially for women. Um, and then we had the first talk, it was about living in an authentic way. So it was all about not being afraid to express ourselves and especially our needs. Um, we talked about in the second uh, meeting, we had uh, a very beautiful um, talk about the beauty of being a woman. I'm trying to kind of translate from 
Italian, uh, the titles. But um, yeah, the beauty of being a woman. But more than that, it's like the feminine itself. Um, so the qualities of being feminine, what does it mean? Uh, what, what are the strengths in this feminine side that is also present in, in men? But um, so that was a bit like that was a topic that we talked about. Um, and then the last meeting was about being gentle with ourselves. And it was all connected to the topic of dignity and how to live a life of dignity, how to express ourselves with dignity and how to uh, um, live our lives according to our values. So the general feedback has been very positive. Some of the participants mentioned how refreshing it was to hear about dignity and um, especially connected to women. Um, I, I feel like personally, I feel women have fought a lot in history to get to a point where uh, we now can express ourselves freely. We can show our beauty and our values and uh, and our good qualities. And so we should be reminded of that a little bit more often and really be confident with it. Um, so the guests and, and the participants really liked it. Um, and I feel like overall it was a, a well-structured and also quite a profound event that allowed the participants to reflect about self-worth, self-love, and also um, the topic of dignity in, in today's society. So there's a little bit of a summary. Uh, for more questions, um, feel free to ask. I'm not sure if there is anything in the chat, but uh, this is just a short, um, a short description. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Debra, for your uh, sharing your experience, and uh, yeah, very nice to hear that um, they they appreciated to hear or um, learning about dignity uh, in our society, and that they found it very refreshing. I can imagine that because it's a topic not really um, spoken about a lot in general, right? So I can imagine um, it was a good experience for the participants. So thank you, ladies, for uh, sharing your um, experience. Uh, like uh, mentioned, it's a it's a broad curriculum that can be used in a lot of different type of situations for a lot of different women and girls and educators. So um, yeah, with this uh, presentation, we hope that uh, people or ladies or leaders have a little bit an idea of what our uh, curriculum is about. Uh, building uh, peace and empowerment the woman way um, yes and then we are coming to an end uh, of our presentation um, there there's room for questions or um, I don't know if anyone has a question the that you could just raise your hand or unmute yourself perhaps uh, also if one of the contributors perhaps, would like to say something short, briefly, about uh, what they feel should be highlighted still. Um, I also would like to offer, to offer the opportunity um, to do so now. Um, is there anyone who would like to say something, ask something? Please feel free to unmute yourself. I do not see anything in the chat so far. Ah, I see Marcia with her hands up. Mrs. Dabril, the floor is yours. Thank you. I just, first of all, I would like to thank you. Congratulate this amazing uh, project. And uh, just to share that, I like two years ago or three, I don't even remember very well. We uh, pre we presented uh, part because it's it was at, at least it was very very long part of the the content just the beginning part and I asked Anais this young uh, lady to do it and she uh, using the material she prepared it for a group of young women. And uh, of course, she talked about the virtues that are necessary in leadership, also how to become a global citizen, um, 
she uh, talked about uh, relating to the community and there were some uh, activities, some exercise, interactive exercises. And uh, the result was very nice in terms of the response uh, of the participants and also uh, one other young lady, she said, I would like to prepare myself to present this, this project. The point is that uh, as it was, I think it was under work uh, and we have been busy and we haven't been able to do it, but we expect this year to definitely do it. So thank you again. Thank you so much, Marcia, for uh, sharing this with us. Anyone else questions? Some of the some of the ones who have contributed a lot, Mrs. Toma. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Kyungin. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. First of all, I would like to say congratulations to all the team that really prepared this uh, amazing uh, amount of um, effort has gone into preparing these materials. Actually. It's long awaited, actually. We, we needed it five years ago, or even more than that. But as uh, um, as we move into the new year, I think it's a great uh, opportunity to use this as a, a, a building block to help uh, find peace in our society and find a way that uh, um, through understanding uh, a teaching or finding values, uh, we can use this curriculum it's very good that it's broken down into three three segments, you know, looking at the, the dignity of the human being. And then, of course, looking at the values of uh, you know, families. So I was really, really pleased that uh, this has been launched and um, we're really looking forward to implementing it in 2024. Uh, we have uh, a number of young women who are, who are probably interested into really finding ways of uh, using this, these uh, ideals, you know, into their own lives. Not just the young women, but each of us actually, we can learn from it. So, yeah, so congratulations to each and every person who contributed. And uh, I do want to remember Joanna, Joanna, Johanna Torreson. Also, at one time, I remember when there's pre preparations going on, it did have a little bit of a lull, you know, time where it was kind of quiet, and she kind of uh, pulled us pulled everything up again and because she's a teacher and she has many skills in this field. And she really brought uh, the curriculum up again, you know. So there's lots of people on the journey who really, you know, encouraged it to, to take fruition. So very, very good. Thank you so much. And uh, well presented by um, Kafilwe. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Mitty. Thank you for also mentioning indeed that uh, also Johanna worked on it a lot and there were different ladies at uh, different moments in times who pulled it and uh, so we could all continue with it. Um, there's also some notification that if you go online and fill out the form, um, it will end up by the, by the ones who uh, arrange the curriculum. Um, so I don't know if anyone would like to add something or have a question. I don't know if I see all hands. So please, if you would like to say something or ask something, just unmute yourselves. I can see that, that, that there is a very nice uh, representation of our whole region, Europe and Middle East, and also all kind of ages and stages of our role as women and in our women lives. And uh, otherwise, uh, if not, then, uh, yeah, personally, I'm also looking forward to uh, working with it um, in different settings, uh, in different fields. Um, maybe, Zoe or Carolyn, would you like to say something as a closing word? Mrs. Zoe. Zoe, yeah. Better. Actually, I, uh, before we close, I would like to encourage the authors of the different chapters, uh, if they would like to say a little bit uh, how they uh, they came to the to to this um, uh, to the result of uh, what they did, like uh, Ingrid, um, uh, Gabby, 
um, Joanna, and yeah. It would be nice. What about Ingrid if she wants to start? I can see that Kifilwe also has her hand up. Yes, I have a, a question um, for the authors. Um, going through the curriculum was go was like uh, traveling on a harmonious journey where, you know, you go through the emotions, the pain, the crying, the laughter, all the way to the point where you feel like you're on top of the world. So I wanted to ask, um, how did you put it together? How did you make it all blend in so well? Maybe Miss Lindemann, since you wanted to say something anyways, <laughs> maybe you could respond. Well, the <clears throat> dignity subject is a long time project, uh, which started about, I think before, so year 2000 about. We started with that in Germany, just first going, trying to find, uh, make people aware how terrible those sexualized advertisement was and how much woman's value was destroyed by this kind of advertisement. And from that point on, we started to think more and more about dignity and develop materials. And through the UN office in New York, finally, also it was possible to present at the Commission on the Status of Women this project of dignity, which meanwhile developed in Europe. I know Martina Coombs, your there too she helped us a lot to get it she she was very inspired by the dignity project so she uh helped to at that time as a president of a european women's federation to uh bring it to the different european conferences and gave us always a place where we could present our ideas and thoughts and so step by step more and more developed and more and more thoughts came and more and more also uh, we did a lot of studying looked for literature in the beginning beginning there was nothing about that that point so uh, dignity was kind of on the award existing in the human rights charters but not, nowhere else and now there's a lot of appreciation of uh, the importance of living dignity. So, <clears throat> well, still working on that part of the curriculum was a great challenge because how to put everything together in and find the things which uh, really for young ladies are important and would move their hearts. So I was very happy about the testimony from Italy because I felt something happen happening inside the hearts of the people. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, working on it, so he gave me a lot of support uh, when I was writing and she was reading it and stimulating and trying to to give them the support and continuing on. Um, I feel for me, dignity is um, really very important in the development of the identity of a person, mm -hmm. to have a stable identity as an adult and then living dignity Mostly it's, uh, we claim our dignity, we claim the human rights, but actually it's mo much more important is to feel our dignity and to live our dignity and to give di dignity to everybody else. That's for me the most important part in that. And is, I think this is really a cornerstone for a peaceful world because if I act and if I deal with 
other people and see respect their dignity and respect them in their value as a human person, no matter where they come from, no matter what is their history, no matter what they did in their life, but in this moment, uh, then I think this is a very important um, part to create peace in this world and to have a peaceful connection to each other. Thank you so much, Ingrid. Those are beautiful words and a beautiful heart behind it and lots of effort. Thank you so much for all your investments uh, for the curriculum. I also wanted to uh, ask the, the author of the prenatal session to maybe say something briefly, maybe in one or two minutes about uh, what you want to address, uh, what not, is not being said so far. You need to unmute. You need to unmute. We can't hear you. Uh, you have to first unmute yourself. You want to, you need to unmute. I see. Okay. Yes. Is that good now? Yes. Yes. So first of all, I would like to thank everybody, every lady of this meeting, before each one has presented a point of view of this peace, love, brotherhood, kindness, beauty, the love of beauty that we all hope to bring to, to the to the way, to the society, to the new humanity. And I only want to, to say some little words about the very, very importance of the woman because she is preparing the future society. She is preparing the future humanity during the foundations of life, during these nine months from the conception to the birth of each child in the world. And by her wishes, by her love, by her hope, she can uh, doing, she can record to this new person all these uh, virtues we want to bring to the world, love and kindness and justice and wisdom and uh, spirituality, all the human, the human values, the mother, the future mother, during these nine months of preparing the foundations of the new future, of the new creator, she can give, she can done a very, very wonderful work for the humanity of tomorrow. I only want to say that, this little thing, because all this is uh, prepared in our PowerPoint. And uh, once again, thank all the ladies for this good cooperation. All together, you have done uh, miracles in this very important subject. Thank you very, very much. And I hope that we'll cooperate in the future too. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. And I also see Mrs. Uh, Gabriele Zürer uh, highlighted. Would you like okay. to add something? Yeah. Thank you so much. I really want to express my gratitude towards the whole team. And I also feel very honored that I was asked also to contribute something. I myself, I have been working already for quite some time, for many, many years, with this IF material from the International Education Foundation that has been composed by many teachers and educators already on the, um, on the foundation of the yeah, three great blessings, personality development, family values, and also of uh, taking care of the, uh, of the creation of nature. And uh, I have been always, uh, I have been very inspired actually by this material because it reminds me again and again of our, of our uh, life goals actually and of our value of course and of uh, what we can really do with our lives 
independently of our circumstances, but they are really very basic goals in our lives uh, to, to be achieved. And especially character education is such an important issue, which has not been taught at schools. They have ethics um, lessons, but there's only the philosoph philosophy about ethics, but it's not really something to educate young people to become good people and to become really a good uh, um, citizens in our society, good leaders, and uh, to, yeah, also in the ongoing process, also to educate their own children and, and ongoing generations well. So I find education is really the key for transforming this world into a better world. So I want to leave it with that. <laughs> And I'm already very excited about it, especially when it's finished and when we can really work with it in all different fields. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Gabriella. And I also see Mrs. Marilyn uh, highlighted from representing the Middle East uh, and also a contributor to the curriculum. Would you like to add something, Mrs. Marilyn? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm very impressed. It became very professional. I was involved in the very beginning, but uh, my contribution seemed very primitive compared to the what actually developed eventually to the end. So yeah, I agree with Gabby that um, character education is extremely important. We use it a lot in the Middle East and uh, hopefully I can use some of this um, I'm going to have to study how to use it because uh, it's uh, got many, many layers and many options and many possibilities. So uh, yeah, I'm really very impressed. Congratulations, Zoe, Caroline, and the others that were really instrumental in bringing this to fruition. And yeah, I look forward to getting a hold of it and studying it and trying to see what we can use uh to really help the young ladies in the especially in the islamic world which i feel is is very important mm -hmm. so thank you thank you thank you so much mrs marilyn thank you so much so i also want to um really uh honor and uh say thanks to all, all the ladies who have very recently worked very hard the last few last week e even to uh finalize things also the technical staff i want to mention lily in austria um and also i see here also on the screen mrs gwen and kifilwe who really uh contributed until the end uh, maybe uh carolyn would you want to say something to close well i thought maybe zoe should say something to close okay. yes zoe yeah, and when we worked together really we did um the the all the 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 thank you and the the gratitude goes to everyone who participated and also to those who were so patient to wait and and stimulate us by saying oh we need one we need we want it mm -hmm. all the time it was uh, really good really good and I hope uh, it can uh, really help not even just our regions the different regions, but uh, even in, in other parts of the world, um, it is very important to really think of uh, the future and a, a substantial way of thinking of the future is really uh, emphasizing and, and empowering uh, youth. Um, we all have children and grandchildren and we know how important it is. We Our, our lives, our physical lives are very limited but we know that the world goes on and what state of the world is going to be, we need to think of it seriously. Perhaps the leaders are not thinking so seriously, but perhaps the leaders also, they need this kind of um, program to be stimulated, uh, I think. Yeah, so thank you, really thank you everybody. Thank you very much. And I hope we can continue. It's uh, amazing the, the the work that everyone has done. And also I'm discovering a lot of translations already have happened. And of course, 
um, I want to um, encourage everyone to translate in other languages and please send us a copy because um, most of the languages are not only spoken in one part, in one country, in many. If somebody translates into Spanish, for example, there you have the whole Latin America open uh, into French, whole Africa, um, in, into Greek, actually, it's not only um, Greece, it's also Cyprus and also the expats everywhere. Uh, I think it is important. So uh, one point that would be important is if you can, uh, once we, you will have the final version and you can adjust your translations, please send us one copy so we are able to to, to share it with other uh, countries of the same language. Yeah. That's Thank all I have. Maybe, Thank you. <coughs> maybe um, Jungian, could we ask everyone to turn on their camera and take a nice photo of all, all everyone? That would be amazing. So ladies, can you all, if possible, uh, open your cameras? If possible, find a nice spot in the house <laughs> if you're uh, if you didn't uh, count on it, and uh, let's make a beautiful picture all together. Um, Keep it on for a while because it's several pages here. Okay. Uh. So, Victis, are you making it? Yeah, but I think someone else should do it also. Yes, and perhaps Mrs. Gwen. Yeah. So let's keep smiling. But my, oh, come on, money didn't turn on their camera. Can you yes. please do that? So again, the request, if possible, put on your cameras and a nice smile. Then at least we have some pages. Smile, keep smiling. <laughs> oh. Nice, I see all kind of faces. Very nice, ladies. Keep it up, keep smiling. Thank you so much. Mrs. Haruko, nice to meet to see you. <laughs> Thank you. How are we doing with the pictures? I, um, I, I, have, I have everyone on my screen. I have 49. So I have. Yeah, we already lost a few, though. We yeah. were 57. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, okay. I have, <clears throat> I have uh, many pictures from the beginning, but people didn't have their cameras on. So, yeah. so just the names. It's fine. It's also an impression. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who was present today. I also see a lot of faces of, of the young professionals. Let's see how we can also implement this curriculum in our practices. Thank you, ladies. Uh, congratulations, everyone. And um, hopefully we will see you again with some follow up on this uh, subject as well. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. For all your hard work, ladies. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.